the BMW M3, arguably the most important M badge to be displayed on the back of any BMW and possibly any German sports car to date. Without this little badge, not only do we not have the benchmark German legend, but we may not even have the legendary M lineup that we have today. Although, this generation seems to get some hate. And I just so happen to own that generation. I own the F80 M3, and here lately I feel like it's become one of the most hated generations. This platform, this chassis, the F80, the F82, the F87, they have a cult-like following. But at the same time, since the new generations have come out, this car has kind of gotten some hate. And I think it has something to do with this car kind of being a lab rat in its own. The E92 M3 was loved because it's the only M3 that you'll ever be able to get with a V8 in it. A naturally aspirated V8 at that. So it sounds amazing. It just feels more driver's car it's smaller it's more compact it's beautiful like that is such a love generation now and this car kind of had this window of it's a lab wrap for the twin turbo inline six motor it's kind of one of the first variations of that motor especially being an s motor so we know that the n54 while a great motor has also had its problems, it's pretty finicky. There's a lot of stuff you have to take care of, right? Well, this car kind of falls into that class. You know, we have the N55, which is went on to become an underrated motor itself, but still well loved. The thing about the N55 is that it sounds amazing. This car tends to get some hate just because of the way it sounds. I don't hate it. But I know that the B58, the N55, those motors sound better. I know that, I'm not gonna argue with you on that. This car is possibly the most beautiful M car of all time. I know that people are gonna think that that's blasphemy whenever they think back to the E46, hell, even the E30, uh, the E92, which in my opinion, they look very similar. So if you think the E92 looks good, there's no way that you can think that this looks worse or, or bad that's just my opinion I just don't think that I, I just don't see it but there's a lot of reasons why this car gets hate it's kind of the first M3 that stepped up as far as technology and whenever it comes to drivers cars people don't really necessarily love a lot of tech which is funny because whenever people argue that the M340 is better than this car they always mention tech and I mean the M340 is a great car. It's arguably faster, but that argument just doesn't hold weight to me because I think that these cars are two totally different cars, the F80 and the M340. So people who are trying to compare them, I think there's like some sort of hatred for this car because the M340 is classified as not really an M car. So I get it. I totally get the arguments, but I think that it's comparing two different things and it shouldn't be happening. That's just my opinion. So don't attack me, B58 guys. I think that that car is great. I even looked at those cars whenever I was, you know, wanting to get an F80 because for around the same price, you could have a brand new car, a newer car. But those cars and kind of the newer M cars, they, they lack a little bit of soul. This car still has a lot of soul. The unpredictability, just, you know, it handles really well and you can just feel everything in the road I love that that's what I want out of my sports car this car gets right to the point it's not a good car to build for going in a straight line I don't think you really can't get it off the line from a dig it's really cooked by a lot of different cars but it's not made for that it's made for going around a track and I think as far as handling and pushing this car to its limits around turns and curves I think that this car holds its weight now I think that this car was loved a whole lot until the G80 came out and 
The G80 just happens to be such a monster whenever it comes to performance. But at the end of the day, BMW is always going to make the newer cars faster. My gripe about the G80, or the G8X in particular, is that they, they actually do kind of feel lifeless. Now, they're still a lot of fun, they're still very rowdy, they're still very obnoxious, but you just feel kind of isolated in that car. You don't really feel any of the road. Um, it's just such a heavy car, and it's so big. Like, that's the route that the evolution of BMW is going. Bigger, faster, more comfortable, more luxury, you know, more tech. I don't hate it. Even though I do like the G80 a lot and I would love to have one, one of the reasons why I'm still in this car in, in particular is the way that it looks. I think that this car looks so good still. I, I don't get tired of looking at this car. I don't think it deserves the hate that it's getting, but I don't think that that's forever. I think that that's just where we are at right now with the way things are going. This car is not the new car anymore. And the E92 has had time to age and it's aged like fine wine. So this car is in a tough spot, but it's in a spot of its own. Oh, oh, shit. So yes, this car, not really considered legendary yet for me personally. This car is already legendary. It already breaks necks everywhere I go. It doesn't have the best sound, but it still sounds kind of cool. I feel like every generation is iconic and legendary in its own way. I mean, BMW, whenever it comes to the M3, they're a lot different than a brand like Porsche with the 911 and the way that they update things. You know, Porsche kind of stays the same and they figure out how to do it so well every time. I mean, a 911 has looked damn near the same forever. These cars, they change the engine every generation and they really figured out how to just keep making it better and better and better. So, the way that this car is better than its last generation, the E92, I would say is definitely in power and performance. This is a more capable car, but that helps it and also hurts it. Because the E92, also so capable, even though it's less power, that car is more of a driver's car and it's probably more fun you know, whenever you're in that naturally aspirated V8 and you're in the rev band and you're really able to push that car the way it's supposed to be pushed, it's hard to deny greatness. Is this car actually more capable? It is if you know what you're doing. It's just a little bit more unpredictable and that turbo lag when it kicks in kind of makes this thing a little bit hot to handle. It's just a lot more restraint, a lot more technology working with this car. You don't actually always feel like it's you doing the work. And the an E92 M3, it's you taking on most of the workload and it's just a great car. It's a fantastic car. I still don't feel like this car deserves the amount of hate that it actually gets. There's a big group of people that love these cars and then there's a big group of people that love to hate on these cars and I don't know why that is. I'm trying to decide if I think that this car will be a future classic. Time will have to pass before we can tell. Such a fun car to drive. Will it be a future classic though? Will it be a car that we look back on when we think of M3? I truly don't know. I really don't. My opinion, to me, it will definitely be the car that I think of whenever I think of M3. Because it's the car that made me fall in love with BMW. This is F80 Trevor. I hope you enjoy the video. I'll catch you in the next one.